First of all, thank you for the invitation to AST and UCAN and for the cooperation. Uh, Ken asked me to say something about the history of red skin disease. Well, there will be a lot of talks later today from Sweden, from Ireland, from Scotland. Mm -hmm. So I will first of all focus on what we did in Norway when this uh, disease occurred uh, and what we know from the, from the Norwegian side. Uh, the alarm went off in the end of May to two days after the start of the fishing season in one of our southernmost rivers, the border river between Norway and Sweden. A lot of fish had red skin and uh, the manager was very frustrated and uh, I asked him to send me photos. And then I uh, had a conversation with one of my former colleagues in the, at the Veterinary Institute and we agreed that this was something completely new in Norway. We had never seen something similar in our 40-year careers. And we, of course we discussed UDN and from our perspective this is something completely different. We could see a lot of bleedings in the dermis. This is where the skin of the salmon has the blood vessels. So there is no uh, bleedings in the epidermis where there are no blood vessels. It's below the scales. And then we could see clear demarcations between healthy and diseased tissue. And we also had a lot of uh, necrotic tissue around the fins. The fins themselves could be called could I say rotten? And it looked really bad in the end, just before the fish died. Yes, a lot of fish died, but not that many in, in that river. Uh, most of them uh, survived, and after some time we could see the healings uh, in the skin. The, 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 the black circles here are a lot of uh, melaninized uh, white blood cells showing that there has been a, a, a battle in the skin here against something and what is something we don't know yet. This uh, river, this border river, is a fairly small Norwegian river, the border river, and it ha in this uh, spring situation it's just 2,000 liters per second. It's quite small and uh, the, it's very peaty river, very different from other Norwegian rivers, it's usually very clear rivers. But the salmon in this river is very good. The common size is 5 to 10 kilos or even more, and grills are very rare. So the disease in this river is multi to fish. It's no grills disease. So then we discussed, because the first days we didn't know about this situation in other rivers, so we discussed what could it be. 2018 was very warm. The first thing we discussed, could it be a, re a reflection of, of the previous year? But again, in this 2019, it was very hot spring and very little water. So could it just be that the salmon was just stressed and there was an outbreak because of something? But then we also discussed, could it be pollutant or chemicals in the fjord? This fjord the, the salmon has to pass is a very... Uh, Previously, a very industrial uh, fjord. They had a lot of industrial activities, and they even thrown a lot of uh, batteries into the fjord. And what this gets, could the batteries be, become leaking of, 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 of some pollutants or chemicals? But we said no, that's unlikely because the gills look perfect, and and still the gills look per, looks perfect in an RSD fish. And we also discussed uh, the, the former rainbow trout farm, which had to close down because of Gyrodactylus salaris a few years before. But could it be, also, could it be another infection uh, that uh, had been spread from, from that fish farming rainbow trout? So then both uh, governmental and private uh, fish health companies took a lot of samples from the fish. We found no virus. We found a lot of bacteria. And we found, of course, as always, a lot of parasites in the fish. But none of these could be considered as primary pathogens. And were, none of these were likely to cause this red skin disease. 
Then we heard that uh, they had, a similar, had many similar outbreaks in other countries. Uh, in, in, uh, on the Swedish west coast, the closest uh, river in the, uh, in the uh, further south in, in Sweden from this ending Dalsel had the same problem. And we heard that rivers in Denmark observed it, and here in, in Scotland, first of all, and in, in Ireland. And I say rivers in Norway because we have seen, have also seen some few fish in other rivers with similar red uh, uh, petechal bleedings, if I could say that. And then we also heard from the Swedes that they had had this similar disease since 2014, and we will hear much about that later today. So what we then did is that we, we applied for money from the Norwegian Research Council. We can get money for arrangements, workshops. So we got that money and we invited uh, managers and scientists from all these countries, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, England, Scotland, Ireland. We also included Russia. We knew that they had some disease problems, but there was no indication that it was something similar, but we wanted to invite the Russians to, to have a good discussion because, with them, because they is about a country in Northern Norway. Um, and Based on the discussions, on the pictures we've, uh, we've, uh, that were presented, uh, we, we, we concluded that it likely was the same disease all over. And we decided, uh, agreed to, to name it the red skin disease. <coughs> we discussed a, a lot of different causes, but there was a much focus uh, in that period about uh, the, the thiamine, the vitamin B de deficiency which uh, Charlotte will speak about later today. So, so what ha has uh, happened since? In, uh, in Baltic Sea, the salmon grow up in the Baltic Sea uh, all the time, and they have had the, the, the disease yearly since 2014. Here in the UK and Ireland, I have been told that you have the disease yearly since 2019. In Norway, Denmark, and mostly on the Swedish West Coast, we only had these two outbreaks in 2019 and 20. Then it disappeared in 21, and this year we have seen no uh, diseased fish. Yes, we do see some fish with some red mark, but it's not a disease outbreak. So how can we explain this? Uh, if we ex uh, think that the salmon in Norway, uh, on the, Swed uh, the southern Norway and uh, in Denmark, and maybe here in the UK and Ireland, do they feed in the same area? You could expect them to have the same problems uh, if these are uh, disease associated with the, with the sea. This is just one of the many uh, uh, questions we have. But when we... When we have told about this in Norway, we have reports from many rivers that they now and then find fish looking like this. And uh, historically, we have said in Norway that these fish get these red bleedings because they have blows when they try to pass waterfalls. Yes, that could be true for some fish, but definitely not all. There is something else out there. And this is from uh, the, the left there is a fish uh, from a couple of years ago, uh, close to the Arctic, Arctic Circle. And this on the right is a fish from the northernmost Atlantic salmon river in the world. Actually, it, it's in, in northern Norway. I, I caught it myself. And, and there is, this may be something different, but it's not only blows because of waterfalls. There is something more out there. I mean, I'm afraid there is more coming up in the future with climate change which affect the Atlantic salmon badly. <clears throat> so there is a lot of factors, possible factors, and even risk factors that haven't been discussed yet. Uh, and we still don't know if this is associated with the freshwater or sea. It looks, it seems to be associated with salt water, but it, not necessarily so. We do see uh, similar red uh, bleedings in, in uh, freshwater fish, now and then. Looks very, very, very similar. And in a period we said that it's unlikely to be an infectious agent. 
and it should possibly was something environmental or nutritional disease. But I think this has turned again, or oh, we will hear more about it from Charlotte later. It may be an infectious disease at all. Uh, and, uh, anyway, or, yeah. So there's a lot of more questions. I will leave it there, and uh, in the next we will hear more about it from the other countries.